What you are looking at here is the newest addition to my computer collection which probably isn't the best word to use but oh well this is my new dual socket LGA 771 system I found this motherboard on eBay going for very cheap on a bid and I thought with my interest in servers and mainly Xeons yep that's still boiling hot it would not be a good thing to let it go so I got it for very cheap it didn't come with RAM or heat sinks although I have got this in my collection bought these two off of eBay as well for very cheap put this wireless card in for my Windows Vista machine that power supply is in my Windows Vista machine. So is that optical drive and that hard drive. Common theme. Virtually everything here was nicked from my Windows Vista machine because it wasn't actually being used for anything. It was just kind of sitting in my cupboard doing nothing. At the moment, this system has two. I can show you by moving up here. Two Intel Xeon 5030s inside it. Those are 65 nanometers, each with two cores, four threads. Uh, relatively nice perform, but if you run the stress test on CPU Z, we can see that apparently both of these Xeons are weaker than a single Core 2 Duo E8500, which is why I purchased a pair of Intel X5355 LJ771 Xeons for this platform. I also have 16 gigs of FBDIM DDR2 modules on their way. An unusual thing to see for a server is a wireless card, that's because what we are going to be doing today requires a lot of devices to potentially connect to this server. And since I do not have a network switch to connect all of them to the server with, wireless is just going to have to do. Now, I don't know how well or if at all this is going to work, but you've probably all seen by the title of the video, I'm going to be attempting to turn this into a domain controller. Now, I know how to set it up, but it hasn't worked in the past. So maybe I don't know how to set it up. Um, so yeah, another thing, this doesn't have a case, because I don't have any E80X cases, and I just haven't bought one there. So this has kind of been its running position for about three days. It's just been sitting on this white piece of material that it was shipped with, and it's just been operating here. And as you can see, this cable mess is probably upsetting a few people. That is its hard drive right there, connected to this port. Um... This motherboard's BIOS does report that it has an onboard RAID controller. I haven't fiddled around with that. I may have a look a little bit later. Um, but yeah, this is currently running Windows Server 2008 R2 Standard Edition. Just to test it out, because whilst I was going to just use the consumer version of Windows 7 or Windows Vista, the ATI ES1000 graphics processor, there you can see it's PCH right there, doesn't actually have drivers for any edition of Windows that isn't a Windows Server. So that did kind of limit my OS installation options. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, the subjects today are going to be these three laptops over here. I was going to do desktops, but I did laptops because they were easier to set up. We have this Dell D520 with its Core 2 Duo T7400, 4 gigs of RAM and an incredibly out of focus screen. 4 gigs of RAM, an Intel 945 chipset and I believe a 200 gig hard drive. <coughs> That's going to be a recurring theme of this video, me just coughing. In the middle we have my old Lenovo T430. This used to be my daily driver before I retired it for the T530, you can see up there. This is the most powerful PC of the bunch. It has a dual-core i7-3520M, 4 gigs of RAM. Did have more powerful CPU, more RAM and an SSD, but they've since migrated to my T530. Has a 320GB hard drive, an Intel HD 4000 and the NVIDIA NVS 5400M dedicated graphics chip. Although something interesting, when I was setting this up to install Windows, I discovered that the integrated graphics on this computer were actually dead. As soon as I installed the drivers for them and any kind of 3D related activity on the iGPU, the screen just flashed black and white. So at the moment it's just using the Nvidia chip, which isn't a massive big deal, but since it's a Fermi chip, it can get quite hot. And this is by far the most hampered PC of our testing. This has an AMD Turion. As you can see there, two cores, two threads. It offers just over half of the performance of the Core 2 Duo. So not that great, but it will suffice. At least it would if it wasn't for just two gigs of RAM. And wow, this thing's actually putting out some serious heat just from sitting at the desktop. Why is my CPU running at two gigas? Anyway, two gigs of RAM, AMD Turion, a one terabit hard drive, because it was the only thing I could find. Um, 
yeah, these are the systems we're going to be using. I was going to use this, my Pentium 4 machine that has made appearances in, I believe, both of my previous videos. This was meant to be the machine that would start the channel, but for some reason I just keep putting off making a video about this thing. There is one coming, I promise. It does have Windows 7 installed to this hard drive here, this additional 120 gig drive, but I just didn't feel like pulling out my Linux machine and putting it there. So, we're not using this, we're just using the laptops. So, I am gonna walk over to my server and pull up my chair and sit down. I'm trying to get away without editing this, so there will be a lot of me just walking around. Ah. Now, to set up a server on Windows Server, it is my belief that you have to go down here. It's been a while since I've done this, and we're just going to drag this into shot. Activate Windows, oh no, I haven't put in my product key yet. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Add roles. This wizard helps you install roles on this server, I believe this is what we want. Now we're going to add Active Directory Domain Services, add these required features. I'm going to have to edit this out because this will take forever. Things to note, help ensure that users can still log on to the network and serve out and install a minimum of two domain controllers for a domain. A DNS server, blah blah blah. This is just testing. So now it's going to go ahead and install the .NET Framework 3.5.1 and the Active Directory Domain Services, which is what will actually allow this computer to run as a domain controller for those down there to connect to and hopefully, if the experiment goes correctly, save files over the network. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here and I will be back once the server has finished. The addition of the roles to the server has now finished and it gave me instructions to type DC promo into the run box. And now it is checking if stuff is installed. Ooh! I really need to get a proper tripod or something, so I'm just going to hold it like this. So, welcome to the Active Directory Domain Services Installation Wizard! Blah 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 blah. I'm going to hit next. Windows Server 2008 Domain Controllers have a new, more secure default... what? Okay, I'm not running a Windows NT server. I want to create a new domain in a new forest. Type a f type the fully qualified domain name in the new root of the domain. So this is where I get to pick my thing. So I'm going to call it Skynet. Corp.skynet.com. Okay. It's not going to be in use because it's the only domain on the network. Now I have no idea if this is going to work over wireless. I'm hoping that it will. I mean, I don't know if this will work over Ethernet because it's been such a long time since I've done it. Forest function level. So this is where I have to pick the oldest device in use on the server. Now the oldest is Windows 7. I'm just going to leave it as it is. which will change it to Windows Server 2008 R2 and just see what this crazy thing happens to do. Then what I will have to do is go onto each of those laptops down there and set them up to connect to the domain. And I will also have to set up, I believe, three accounts on here. There probably is a way to migrate the local accounts from all of those laptops onto the domain, but I will figure that out later. And then what I might try and do is write a few documents, change a few settings on each of the accounts and see if they synchronise across the devices. Which would be pretty cool. So I don't know how long this is going to take, so I'm going to pause here and be back when it's done. Or not, because it's just finished. So I read on the internet that if there is just one, then I can uncheck that. We recommend that you install the DNS service on the first domain controller. Alright, well I'll do that then even though the internet said I could uncheck it. Well, I'm just going to keep it as DCHP, just for ease of something or other. A dedication for the DNS server cannot be created because the, the authoritative parent zone cannot be found 
What? If you are integrating with an existing DNS infrastructure, you should manually create a delegation to this DNS server in the parent zone to ensure reliable name resolution from outside the domain core.skynet.com. Otherwise, no action is required. Well, this is the only one, so I'm going to hit yes and assume no action is required. Database folder, log files folder. Don't know what any of that means. Assign a password for the administrator account, okay? I'll just use the one that I used when I set up the computer with the local account. Excuse my terrible typing speed, this angle is really not optimal for typing. There we go. NetBIOS name of the domain is Corp. Okay. Let's just do that, just so that it does stuff. So now I'm actually going to pause, and I'll be back when it decides to restart. Okay, so the computer has rebooted, and it appears that it is using the domain administrator account rather than the local one, and I cannot get a comfortable position for my phone. So we're going to attempt to log in. Even though Corp is not the name I wanted this domain to have, it will do fine as a test. Let's just see what it happens to do. And then we get the fun part of finding out if this was all for nothing. And see if the laptops will connect to the domain. After I have obviously set up some user accounts on the domain for them to log into. We shall see. I might try some interesting things with the group policy as well. Set up some limitations like an artificial school environment where you can't do anything on the computers okay um i do not remember a fucking thing about windows server uh where is the user account section did they move it or is it still in control panel like it was in windows 7 i hope it's just in control no but i need to add it to the Frickin' frickety frackety frackety frickety domain. Not just the local machine. So, let's look in server manager, see if we can find anything there. If it would load off this tremendously slow hard drive. Oh, the computer hasn't even finished loading yet. We don't have the network or anything down in the taskbar. Well, let's give it a few minutes. Okay, so I tried to go into the computer user manager through the... Uh, Control user password to command, and it said the do computer dual Xeon is a domain controller. This snap in cannot be used on domain control. And domain accounts are managed with the Active Directory users and computer snap in, which I found in the administrative tool section under the start menu. So they had moved it from Windows 7. So I'm assuming to add new user, I go under here and users. There it is. I've got a bunch of people, so I'm just going to do new. How do I do that? Do I have to add the computer first? Um, okay. Let's just do the Dell first. Domain admins. Yeah, we'll set that up as a domain admin. Oh, I don't know any of these. Is it just users? Yeah. So we'll do domain admin first and just see what happens. Now I'm going to do users. New user. We're going to call it Dell. D520 for the initials. D520 is the last name. That's a really weird last name. So it's Dell D520. D520. No, 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 no. I just want the username being D5. Actually, we're just going to have person1. User logon name P1. 
at corp.skynet.com, okay? And yeah, we'll just do that. Oh fuck, there's a fucking password out. I just kicked something on the server. Because it is on the floor right by my foot. So, uh, what's a password? How about password1 with a capital P? There we go. Now I just need to do the same thing for all three laptops. You can see here we have person 1, person 2 and person 3 set up as their computer accounts respectively. Now is the arguably more interesting part of the video. Where I take a seat in front of my D520. Get the screen in focus. And attempt to set everything up. So go to computer. Properties. Uh, advanced system settings. Wow, that Windows Experience Index sucks. Go to computer name, network, change, domain. So, corp.skynet.com. Please work. An Active Directory domain controller could not be contacted. Ensure the name is typed correctly. Details. DNS name does not exist. Um. Hmm. Am I typing it correctly? Let's find out. <laughs> this is what happened when I tried it in the virtual machine. Yeah, corp.skynet.com. I'm so confused. I'm going to have to Google this and find out why it's not working. Progress is being made here. As you can see, I have attempted to ping and then do the trace route command on all three of the computers that I'm trying to connect to the domain. And as you can see, all of them, when I use the IP, managed to get a response and also identify the host name as dualzeon.lan. So I'm just going to do dash dash dualzeon.lan and see if I get anything. Uh -huh. Okay. That's good. Um, cool. So it should just be admin is Rator at corp dot skynet dot com password should be I don't believe it. We're in. Does this mean I'm going to be able to add it now? Let's try looking on the D520, see if it shows up. It's on it. This is the one I was doing all my testing on, and this is the one that picks it up. So does it show in the network devices? No, we just got the three laptops. Hmm. No, I don't want it. So they are at least communicating. So now I just need to figure out what the hell's going on. So, I've been doing a bit of reading online, and I found a screenshot of apparently what I need to change. So I need to go to the Network and Sharing Center, click this. I've already got it open. Uh, go to Properties, IPv4. Then go to properties again and use this. I need to change this. So I'm going to do what? 10. 10. Oh god, no. 10.10.10.1. 
10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10 .10. Let's try that. And then I have to go to uh, properties, advanced, DNS, add. Now what do I do? Uh, Oh shit, no, I didn't want to do that. Fuck. Um, I wanted to do IPv4 properties. Advanced. Then add. Now what do I add to it? Because I've been looking up tutorials on the D4. Putting the server on the floor was always a bad idea. Sorry, server. Right, so I had to add. Now what do I do? Shut up, Facebook. Enter the IP address of your domain controller. Wait, what? Do I do this on the workstations? Or on the server itself? In most cases... First log on to the machine that you want to join the domain... Oh, so I do this on this machine. Okay, 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 okay. Network and sharing center. Why this network connection? I really hope I'm not showing anything important. Yeah, that's my SSID. Um... Properties. IPv4. Adva- Wait. But that's set to that. Okay, well, try that later. Advanced. DNS. Add. Enter the IP address of your main controller, okay? 192.168.1.79 Close all windows and maybe to restart the computer, retry to join the domain, okay? Just to play it safe. We're gonna restart now. And I'm gonna be crossing my fingers. Okay, so we're logging back in. T430 is still installing drivers. So, I have no clue if this is going to work. I'm hoping it is, because if not, I've pretty much exhausted everything. Advanced system settings. Good, finger for even restored. I don't know why I'm so fussed about drives on the T430. The installation of Windows is probably going to get wiped out if this video succeeds or if it fails. Looks like it's going to fail, but hopefully this will prove me wrong. I want to join the domain. Corp. Dot. No, fuck's sake. I want to join the domain. Corp. Dot. Sky. Net. Dot. Com. Everybody cross your fingers. I'm absolutely shitting myself. My fingers are crossed. And I'm going to hit the end button with them crossed. Come on. <laughs> Why is it still doing that? Oh, I tell you what, we're going to try it on another computer, specifically this one, so, the T430, Network and Sharing Center, Connections, Properties, IPv4, Properties, Advanced, DNS 192.168.1.79 Add Okay, okay Close Close, now we're gonna reboot And hope this one works I know I'll be back Once it has rebooted
Okay, we're back in on the T430. I'm going to waste no time. I want to see this work before I end this video. Fuck you! Well, it's back to the drawing board then. As you can tell by the time on my D520 down here, I have been sat here troubleshooting this for quite a while, and I think, unfortunately, it is time to say enough is enough. I have watched YouTube videos, I have been on forums on the internet, and I just cannot get this to work. I'm fairly certain it's because I'm trying to do it over wireless, but I just disabled the Dell D520's network adapter and plugged it in via an Ethernet connection, and it still doesn't work. So, I honestly have no idea what is going on. I have tried everything I can think of. I followed a YouTube video exactly, and I get this exact same error, and it's pissing me off, because I don't know what the fuck's going on. So, I'm going to have to call it here. Sometime in the near future, I may return to this, I may buy, in fact, I'm hoping I'm going to buy a proper dedicated network switch and some Ethernet cables. We're going to network all these computers together properly, and we're going to do it properly. But then if it doesn't work, it's going to piss me off even more. I, don't, I honestly don't know, guys. I know this is kind of a short and disappointing video. I was hoping it'd be a longer video, but one where I actually got something done, but unfortunately, that's not really going to be the case. So I thank you to those who have stuck it out with me for this long. And I'm sorry to leave you on this unfortunate ending. But in the future, we will definitely be returning to this with the proper hardware to do so. So, I'll thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.